So today we're going to be taking a look at ZMK firmware and how to actually create a board from scratch. I'm not going to dive deep into all the features of ZMK because, well, it does a ton of stuff. You could look at the documentation if you want to figure that out. But hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to create a board, set up your matrix and start wiring it up either hand wired or PCB because it pretty much is the same no matter what. Uh, that said, I do have a video separate for the actual hardware that I'll link in the top right. So you can actually go check that out if you haven't seen that already. But what's really cool about ZMK is that potentially you could do everything on an iPad because it leverages GitHub Actions, meaning you pretty much push your code up to the repo and it does everything else for you there. It compiles it and then gives you a firmware file. So what we're going to do is we're going to just hop into the computer and we're just break this down step by step and hopefully by the end you can build a keyboard. So the first thing we have to do is create a repository where all our code will be compiled and stored. You can do this by going to GitHub and then just typing in a new repository name. And if you don't know how to get there, you basically just click the plus to click new repository. But we're going to name this zmk-config and then dash tube test. Tube test, replace it with whatever your board name is, but this is the overall naming convention for zmk, zmk-config and then dash whatever your board is called. So we're going to just click create repository and that's all we need in here. Now we can jump into a terminal. Now all we have to do to get this code ready to push up to GitHub is inside of this terminal, we're going to just paste this command, which is copied from the zmk documentation, but this will basically run an executable that will give us a little bit of a CLI to work with. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just pick the 2% milk keyboard. This is basically just telling which keyboard you want to select. And then this is the more important part here because this is determining which MCU you're using. Most of you, if not all of you will be using a nice nano because these are wireless boards. So we're going to just pretty much click the six option for the nice nano v2. And then now we want to copy in the stock key map just in case you want to customize that. You don't always have to do this, but I always do it just to have something to reference. So just click yes. And then now you enter in your GitHub username and then you have the GitHub repo name, which is what we just created. And now this part here is important to pay attention to. If I come over to GitHub, you'll see that I am actually using a SSH key in order to authenticate. Most of you probably will be using default authentication unless you are in the code world and have the proper authentication set up. So I'm just going to copy this here and I'll paste that in here and press enter. And then now I'm just going to click yes to continue. And this will do everything it needs to do to set up this keyboard. All I'm going to do now, and this is an important step to not miss, is I'm going to do CD into that new folder we made, zmk-config tube test, hit enter. And now we're into the working directory and we can actually start doing stuff with this code dot to open the actual current working directory inside of VS code. I'm going to trust the authors because I'm the author of it. And then we can see here that this is the default structure for the actual project. We have the config folder and then we have the build.yaml. So we're going to first jump into build.yaml and we're going to name this what we want our board to be called. I'm going to be calling this just tube test. So we'll just name that and we can save this file. And then we can delete these two files here, the 2% milk.conf and the 2% milk.keymap. Now we're going to create four files inside of the config folder. But first, we're going to hop back over to a terminal to actually make the directory. Now we're back in the terminal, and I just have a command copied here, but it's basically make directory dash p for path, and we're going to create config boards shields board name. Obviously, board name we're going to want to replace with tube test or whatever board you are creating. So the first file that we're going to create is kconfig.shield. And basically inside of this file, you're just defining what this keyboard actually is. So you're going to type in shield underscore whatever your keyboard is and all uppercase here. And then underneath here, you're going to just replace this with whatever your keyboard name is. You could name this tube test if you wanted to do a camel case, but I'm just going to do tube test for this example. And as a side note, this actually will match whatever you put in here. So if you do do it this way, which I will do here, and then I change this to tube test, these should match because this is basically how ZMK is referencing your board. But that's all that belongs in this file. We're going to jump on to the next one now. The next file is kconfig.defconfig, and all this file does is it pretty much handles configurations for your board. All we're going to be doing is just naming the board in here, but there's other stuff you can do according to the documentation. But if we take a look here, you can see if shield tube test, and remember tube test is whatever your board will be called, you want to replace that. But we can also see that this matches what we just created inside of kconfig of config shield tube test. So that's basically defining where your keyboard exists. Now in here, all we're doing is we're running config ZMK keyboard name, and we're setting it to tube test. This part here, you can replace whatever you want. It's just important to note that this can only be 16 characters or less. I believe it's a Bluetooth limitation that if you go over that, stuff won't work right. I've never tested it, so I don't actually know what happens, but just keep it 16 characters or less and you should be fine. Now this next file is called tubetest.overlay, and it's important to keep in mind that this name here should actually match what is inside of our kconfig.shield right here. So this should match that, and then you're pretty much good to go there. Now inside of this file is where we're gonna be storing either the matrix or the direct pin wiring definition. So this basically defines 
defines how your keyboard connects to the controller. We're going to be starting here with the actual matrix definition because that's probably what most people will be using for this. But then later in the video, we'll touch on the actual direct pin wiring. So we're just going to break this file down line by line because I think that's the simplest way to do this. So the include for the matrix transform is basically importing the macro for this default transform, which we'll talk about in a few moments here. But what's important in this file is the default case scan. This is where the bulk of the work is done inside of this file. And all this is doing is it's very simple actually, is you'll pretty much have this for every single board. This will be the same pretty much regardless of what board you're doing. But this part down here is where you're defining which pins to use on your actual controller. So you can see here we have row GPIOs and this is each referring to Pro Micro 15, Pro Micro 14, and Pro Micro 16. You're also seeing this over here which I'm not going to explain because I don't really understand it, but I will pop up a screenshot from the actual creator of ZMK who kind of explains what that's doing. It's basically biasing the pins so it knows when they're on or not. But that's really simple in here. It's not really that complicated. You can see for our columns, we're using four, five, and six. And that's basically it. We're defining a three by three matrix right now. But right now, how we're defining it, this is saying a three by three, one by one grid, meaning you can't have, say, three keys on one row, two on the next, and three on the bottom. It's always going to expect that in the actual key map. That is where the default transform comes in. So the default transform, and it's important to keep in mind, I mentioned this a second ago, you need this include in order to get this working. But the default transform basically says that we want the key at 00, 01, 02. It's defining how your key map is going to actually look. So if we didn't have a key, say, on the second row here, we could actually delete this, and this is what your keyboard would look like. So this is basically just telling ZMK that, hey, I only have two keys on the second row. I don't need you to scan for three keys and it will know that based on this transform. The other thing important in this here is also just defining the rows and columns just so it knows what your matrix size is. You don't need that in the default case scan, but you do need it in the default transform. Now, the last thing in this file is this chosen property, and this is basically just defining which ones to use. So we're using the default case scan defined right here. And then we're using the default transform defined right here. Now, this is actually kind of cool because you could actually define multiple default transforms or multiple transforms, depending on if, say, you're using a keyboard where it has an option to do a three by three layout or maybe a three by two layout or different layouts. So you could have multiple default transforms to have different layouts for your actual board. What I've now done is replace the code inside of tubetest.overlay with the wiring for a direct wired board. And what you're going to notice in here is that we no longer have a default transform. The reason to not have a default transform inside of this file is because, well, for a direct wired board, the keyboard knows where each key is because it's sending it directly to a pin on it. So it's not scanning a matrix left to right. If a key is missing at, say, row two, position three, it's not going to look for it there because it's not scanning a matrix. It just says, hey, there's no key at this pin. So simple as that. But inside of this file, it's pretty much the same as before, where we're just choosing the default case scan. We're setting up the compatible and label the same as before. But the important part here is input GPIOs. We're basically just saying use each pin on the board and that's basically it in here. And then the key map is just gonna scan those pins and that's it. So direct pin is a lot simpler than the matrix definitions, but it limits you in the sense that you need to have enough pins for every key on your board. The final file I wanna talk about is tubetest.keymap or whatever your board is called dot keymap. And this file here is basically just the keymap for your board. It's not too complicated, so I'm not gonna like dive into everything in here. But what I do wanna talk about is the Bluetooth layer because these are Bluetooth boards and you obviously need Bluetooth functions. So all I have here is a secondary layer and it's important to note that if you do have a secondary layer in ZMK, that it should be accessible. So I do have an MO1 here, so I could switch to that layer. If you don't do this, ZMK will air out when it goes to compile. But all I have in my Bluetooth layer is three different profiles. I believe you can have up to five inside of ZMK, so you could be connected to five devices at once and then just switch between them with these profiles. And then I have the Bluetooth clear function to clear each one of these profiles and make them accessible from the computer that I'm trying to connect to. And then I just have a bootloader mode, so I can easily put in a bootloader. Very simple stuff in here, probably pretty self-explanatory. So I think what we can do now is hop into a terminal and get this compiling. Here we are back inside of our terminal and all we're gonna do inside of here is run git add a to add all files. We're gonna do git commit with some type of message. So we're gonna just name this compile. And then we're gonna run git push and we're gonna hop over to GitHub to see the board actually compiling. So here we are back on GitHub now and all we're gonna do is go to the actions tab. And this is where all your code will be compiled. You can see that I have quite a few failed in here and basically I forgot to save a file. So if you do encounter errors, make sure you saved all your files. But we're just gonna go to the latest one when I actually did save my files. 
And we're gonna just view this here and you'll be able to see as this is compiling in real time, this is obviously already built, but you'll be able to see all your like code and stuff as it compiles and everything it's doing. Any errors that occur will also show up in here. It'll give you a notification that the build actually failed. But what we're interested if we go back to the summary is we're interested in the artifacts here and we're gonna just download the firmware, which will download a zip file. We will open this up and you will see in here that we have a UF2 file. All you have to do to get this onto your controller is you put it into bootloader mode, plug it in and then drop this file on it. It will auto eject and everything's done in there. What's really cool about ZMK, which I think I mentioned in the beginning of this video is that you can probably do this all from an iPad because nothing is relying on a local install of anything. It's all done remotely on GitHub and everything's just recognized as like a disc. So there's no like special loaders to actually access these keyboards, unless there's something I'm missing with like the actual nice nano when you plug it in maybe it needs something additional, but it should just be detected as a disc and you'll be able to just do this all from any device really. But with that said, hopefully this video was clear and got you in a good enough starting point to actually build a keyboard from scratch with ZMK. If you do have any questions, make sure to ask them down below and I'll do my best to answer those. Also, of course, my Discord and the official ZMK Discord are great resources for that. If you did like this, like the video, subscribe, do those things, of course. And with that said, I think I covered what I want to cover today and I'll see you next time.